Greetings, sunshines and sunnies. It is I, Queen J. Lotus, Pimp Sun Kiss. Coming at y'all right quick, right fast. Not for real, for real, though. But... <laughs> But coming at y'all right quick, right fast, as I'ma say, for a pick a card read. Following up from the intro video that I did labeled about memories. It's a channel collective reading that is a intro for an intro for this pick a card amongst Pick a cards that will be coming following this one. Yes, it will be a whole saga. And I'm going to make a playlist for it. So you know how to find all the things. Now, it will be in your best interest to be sure to tune in to the collective reading video first. How to never, it is not an utmost requirement. But watching the collective video can give you some extra information in a way and allow you to see how certain synchronicities play out amongst readings and amongst these readings. Let me also apologize in advance and beg your pardon for the fan going in the background, okay? I live in Mississippi. I also have to do my videos outside because I don't live alone and people be peopling. So it's mad hot. It's mad hot out here. And I need the fan. So my apologies. I may try to, you know, put my mic back in order at some point once I get all of those things together. And that might help cancel out the noise some. Might be something I can do in editing. I'm going to see what I can do. But just please, I beg of thee, your pardon for that fan. Because, baby, I need that fan. But I do understand that it is roaring in the background. Okay? Okay. Now, I have two cards here in this picture that you see on your screen. And each card represents... A different group the card to the left of them represents group one the card to the right of them represents group two you can choose however you want to choose okay you can go based on like and left as opposed to right you can go based on the imagery of the cards that are there you can go based on the angel number synchronicity alignment of the timestamps, which there will be timestamps in the comments. So, yeah, you can do your angel number calculating and all that to decide which group that you go with. You can any, many, many, mo meditate on it, whatever, what have you to choose your group. Take what resonates and leave the rest on the flow. Take the meat and spit at the bone. Okay? And if you feel called to listen to both groups, don't cheat yourself, baby. Treat yourself, okay? And if you choose one group and you feel like, uh, uh, I don't know. I might have chose wrong. Maybe you did. Choose the next group and see if there's anything there for you. All right? And again, Take what resonates and leave the rest on the flow. Eat the meat and spit out the bone. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the specificities of the cards after <laughs> I present the question. Now, the question is in the title, and I do repeat the question throughout the groups, but I'm going to go ahead and say it make sure that i say it in the intro before we get there <laughs> which is what lost information is within suppressed and repressed memories that are blocking and or delaying your progress and manifestations so this reading and the messages will be surrounding information 
quote unquote, which could be about yourself, about certain circumstances that you're in, about things that are to come or could be possible to come, things that you're trying to manifest, okay? Things that you're trying to manifest and progress on. There is information that you need for that that is lost within suppressed and or repressed memories. And we're channeling both, um, but I am going to explain a bit about the difference between repressed and suppressed memories. And I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible and as quick as possible. Repressed memories is something that you don't have much control over. Your brain will be within the circumstance, whatever circumstance that you're in or whatever circumstance that it is, and say, this is too much for me to handle, system overload, if I take any more, this system is going to crash. And so they will repress the operatives in your brain, the survival mechanism in your brain will take that and say, okay, repress it. Push it to the very back, erase it, put it in the trash bin. Similar to how your phone operates. You can put some things in the trash bin, which won't be deleted totally. It'll just sit there in the trash bin. And you decide when you go in that trash bin and filter out what you really want to keep and what you really want to get rid of, okay? So keeping that same mindset here. When your brain decides to repress something, it throws it to the trash bin. And it does so because it is kicking in to help you in elements where you are and or feel incompetent. Like you don't have a playbook to go by for a certain circumstance that is likely traumatizing or painful or uncomfortable for whatever reason. And so your brain will say, like I said, too much. If I take any more, system gonna crash, okay? Throw it in the trash bin. But when you suppress memories, your mind constantly sends them up to you or has constantly sent them up to you at a point and you develop a habit and a routine of saying, I'm not gonna think about that. I'm gonna find something else to do. I'm going to push that down. I'm going to actively put it in the trash bin and direct my energy elsewhere so I don't have to think about that. Suppressed, you're making a choice. It's coming up for whatever reason and you are making an active cognitive choice or at least have developed a habit from at some point actively making a choice to throw it in the trash and push it down and stuff it down multiple times over a course of time. Repressed, again, your brain decided for you and said, we gonna get rid of that. <laughs> I'm gonna stuff it over here real quick. And you'll know if and when it's important for you to go in that trash bin and decide whether or not it is or is not important and get rid of it or have it recycled back into the mainstream of things for better purposes so again i say before we get into the rest of the video what lost information is within your suppressed and or repressed memories that is delaying and or blocking your progress and manifestations and if you're still a little confused about where we're going with that don't worry, it's going to be explained and made more sense of throughout the readings. I connect at least all of the dots that I possibly can. <laughs> and so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the specificity of the different groups. Sunnies of group one. Happy to see you. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the specificities of y'all's cards, okay? What lost information is within you all suppressed and or repressed memories that is causing blockages and delays in 
your progress and manifestation. And we start off with a Santa Marte Oracle card, which is the number 15. And it is a Native American word that I do not know how to pronounce. And I ain't going to even disrespect it like that. How so never. This is the mother goddess of the earth, of sex, of the moon, and of birth. Connected to the second and seventh cards in this deck, the complementary primary impulses of masculine, which is the number two card in this deck, and feminine, which is the number seven card in this deck. Ooh, duality. Masculine and feminine coming together. Ooh. And you can low key see that in the imagery of it all. That being is like three faced it. So that can be taken as a masculine side, a feminine side, and then the higher self as a whole. Mm. And or the lower self as a whole. Mm. You may also take it as this is a deity and we are made in this image. And so as there are multiples of us, it has multiple faces. <laughs> and you may also notice a skeletal baby being released at the very very bottom zoom in on it if you can and you'll see it even clearer but there is a skeletal baby seemingly being birthed from between the legs of this mother goddess as well and i'm going to continue to read from the text real quick and then i'm gonna get specifically into the messages and all that so i'm gonna read this first part again number 15 mother goddess of the earth of sex of the moon and of birth connected to the second and seventh cards the complementary primary impulses of masculine and feminine which can only bring forth descendants by cooperate benevolent protector of fertility we see her devouring a malevolent centipede for she was also seen as a purifying goddess to whom people confess their sins which she purified by devouring them the advice of the day Trust your intuition, but first accept and admit your defaults to yourself. Only in this way can your journey be prolific, rich, and unobscured by your ego. Now, in simple terms, y'all, this mother goddess of earth, sex, the moon, and birth, which also sounds like the Egyptian goddess Hathor. So this may be the uh, Native American equivalent to Hathor. But yes, they are showing up with messages on lost information concerning your existence and i can't lie okay trigger warning there is some energy here concerning a self-hate frequency so many of you may be mindlessly on a frequency of self-hate so within your suppressed and repressed memories is information about how this self-hate was poured into you and how you respond to it so a lot of you have probably also um, attracted a lot of people that hate on you. Like on the slick, like they love you so much that they hate you. They want to be around you because you make them look better one way or another. They like what you can do for them. They like opportunities and perks and things that come with you. But they really don't like you because they're too busy hating on you internally. And so wolves in sheep's clothing type energy here and this is coming up as spirit saying that they've been sending you these people to act as mirrors <laughs> interestingly enough because um you could also say that the faces on the card on the card the faces are mirroring each other just as well as i said she seems to be a native american equivalent to hathor who is not only also symbolized by the moon but it's also symbolized by a cow and a mirror <laughs> so yeah a lot of synchronicity is going on here but again spirit has been taking you through cycles of dealing with people who like love you so much they hate you type shit wolves in sheep's clothing because they're trying to mirror to you how not to be to yourself and this seems to be coming from a family pathology so there may definitely be a need to reflect on childhood things and i'm gonna go ahead and let that segue us into the elaboration cards that i pulled which are from the santa mirte tarot deck and we're gonna start with the one that is specifically touching on childhood memories and the lost information that may be coming with them to be processed and purged 
Well, I'm taking the wisdom with you, okay? Anywho, we have the Six of Cups there, which gives me um, that some people in this group dealt with a lot of neglect from their parents and or their village in a way where either your parents literally ne neglected you because they were always busy doing something else and or just like they paid like if you got siblings they may have paid your siblings more attention than you and or and this could also be like your only child or whatever or even if you have siblings i'm just also picking up that um somebody constantly thinks always giving more attention to children outside this household you nice to everybody else outside this household but when it comes to me when it comes to your actual family you are rude as fuck to us and treat us like shit mm. that's um something that is channeling through here okay in the childhood memories <laughs> And for some of you, there seems to be a, a trauma response to this and a suppressing and or repressing response to this by neglecting yourself in certain ways where you may yourself mindlessly treat other people so well and with kitten gloves and woo 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 affection it's gonna be okay and sunshine on your day and all that but then when it comes to yourself you're very hard on yourself you don't forgive yourself very easy you tend to beat yourself up about any little thing very hypercritical of yourself um you may also not indulge in self-care like talking about like not even thinking too much about it but like neglecting to pamper yourself get your hair and nails done do your own hair and nails if you will turn on some music turn on a show or a movie that you like and just doll yourself up okay you know put on that ridge you know what i'm saying get your ribs up you know <laughs> i'm silly but yeah you know make yourself laugh you know, be real giddy in your feminine energy with yourself. Even if you are a man, I don't know um, a masculine equivalent. You put that shit on or something. I don't know the masculine equivalent term right now to say for y'all. But you know what I'm saying? You get fancy, huh? Or whatever in the mirror. Wash your face. Polish it and shit. You know, put a mask on. Do a do a skin, a facial shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Invest in a massage. Okay? Get your stretch on. Okay? Soak your feet. Lather yourself up, put some perfume, some cologne on, some lotion, some body scented oils and whatnot, okay? Yes. So there needs to be more of that because I just heard like you don't even know what you're missing. And that's kind of like where it's coming from because you haven't gotten much of that from the person or people that were really supposed to give it to you as the people that created you that are responsible for your birth into this realm. Um, so it's like you're functioning in a way of like you can't miss what you never had, but you are missing it. You just don't have anything to go by right now. So you missing it and you don't even know what you're missing. <laughs> and so it's something that you're trying to manifest and you not knowing what you're missing is literally what's getting in the way of it. Because like, you just, it's just, it's not really in you. Like it hasn't been, it's in you, but it hasn't been poured into you. It hasn't been um, harvested in you by your parents and by your village. So you kind of just like got to start from scratch type shit. And you just got to basically make yourself commit to a regimen of pampering yourself. Even if it's just one day out the week to every other week, you know, making it a lifestyle to pamper yourself. For others of you, there seems to be a response that's kind of like on the opposite end of it, where you function a little more selfishly. And selfishness doesn't necessarily have to be bad, um, but when it's excessive, especially mindlessly, and there's a plethora of different ways that you can be selfish, it don't just mean that you are mean, a straight up bitch, or you know, ever also stingy. It could be something so simple as people tell you a lot about themselves and things that they've been through and feel and things of that nature. But when it boils down to it, like y'all can be cool for so long and quote unquote talking for so long that it gets to a point and you know everything about them and they don't know too much of anything about you. <laughs> so that could be a form of selfishness um, that is considered like emotional selfishness in a way and kind of a spiritual selfishness in a way as well because people are bearing their souls to you and you are making it a one-sided exchange. Granted, you don't need to open up to just any and everybody. Definitely use your sense of discernment. Um, but at the same time, 
especially when you've been cool with people for so long and you're not opening up to them with any explanation it can be insulting to them and just insulting in general because you are clearly not trusting them you're not making a mindful effort to trust them like your trust comes with time and experience and all of that but at the same time trusting someone is also a choice and there are things that you do actively to show that you trust someone and that's a compliment to their character now if you have a light bulb moment and acknowledge it about yourself like this particular message resonates with you and you also reflect and be like well i don't trust none of these motherfuckers well the time has come for you to evaluate why why do you have a bunch of people around you that you can't trust or at least you feel like you can't trust them then what is the purpose of having them around and what is that reflecting about you <laughs> and a part of what it could be reflecting going back to trust is that you have a hard time trusting yourself so this is giving me um some possible information on some of you all's memories and lost information within those memories which is um again um on the neglect end many of you in this particular uh section of the message may have dealt with emotional neglect where your parents were likely present or at least a parent was present and they provided and y'all could talk and laugh and do things together but as soon as you are in your feces about anything they want to silence you or they laugh in your face and don't take you serious they call you dramatic drama queen drama king you sassy or you so sensitive that type shit and so this has made you or at least many of you react in a way that's like well what's the point don't nobody care about my feelings so i'm not gonna say nothing don't nobody care about what i've experienced so i just keep it to myself and that's blocking something specific and it's literally coming through right now that's blocking something specifically attached to what you're trying to manifest and also your divine purpose because something attached to some of you all's divine purpose was coming up through right now is you supposed to be a storyteller in some type of way uh, whether you like start a channel or something where you do story times or you write books and tell stories that way or you write music you write lyrics things of that nature movies or playwriting or tv writing of any sort you're supposed to be telling stories and making money telling stories and also healing the universe through telling stories but because you are a uh, trauma responding in a way that you are silencing yourself you you're literally blocking yourself and i'm hearing creative block so some of you in this particular section of the message you probably been experiencing writer's block or at least uh, what you perceive to be writer's block or creator's block or whatever what have you and it's literally because you have a whole lot of resistance to reflecting on the things that you've been through and telling your story to other people and to an audience or whatever what have you and even in your own relationships that <laughs> you're blocking yourself you're blocking your manifestation tis light love and healing but yeah um i'm gonna go ahead and move on to the other cards that we have here so i'm gonna jump over to the empress in reverse so regardless of whether where you fail in those messages that i just read off the empress in reverse is gearing towards a lack of self-confidence so this is also bringing up memories oh i'm picking up somebody's middle school era I'm picking up somebody's middle school era and somebody's sophomore year in high school going into their junior year of high school. Um, and so, yeah, this is dealing with some embarrassing things haven't happened in school. Some embarrassing things haven't happened in your childhood. I'm hearing somebody's mama used to come up to the school and whoop them. And I'm hearing normalization. So somebody normalized it or it seemed to be normalized. So you just stuffed it down and then like, you know, try to feel it or anything. But there is shame and humiliation being stored in y'all's body um due to not addressing these issues and addressing the feelings surrounding them and the memories surrounding them processing them and purging them filtering and purging filtering uh what i mean by filtering is developing your gratitude and wisdom surrounding the situations and taking that with you and purging the rest that's what i mean by filtering all in all though um seems like a lot of y'all's confidence is fractured Specifically as it concerns your belief system surrounding your ability to achieve and bring in, make for yourself exactly what you want and need. 
I'm hearing someone or some people have constantly felt like they're always second best. Like they know that they're great at what they do, but somehow when they uh, compete in things or have indulged in extracurricular activities and other creative things, it seems like they always come up as second best. I'm, always, I'm also seeing uh, some athletes in this group as well. Also having the feelings that they're always coming up short, always coming up third, second best, and never like the front runner. Um, seeing some academic people here, uh, feeling like this pattern has gone throughout school, like you end up in like top 10 type shit, and you like number nine, but you like, I could have been number one. Why, why wasn't I number one? I must be stupid. <laughs> and uh, somewhere in that too is a neglect to show gratitude for what you did accomplish. Feeling like you're either the very, very best, number one, or you lost. And that's just that's just very hard on yourself. That's being very hard on yourself. And I'm hearing there needs to be more gratitude that you've shown yourself and other people that you're capable of greatness, even at young ages. Um, what seems to be going on here, though, is, again, the hate and ass energy from a lot of people that you've been surrounded by throughout your childhood and then throughout your adult life and things of that nature. For those of you who are now adults and whatnot, I would assume it's mostly adults here. <laughs> um, but yeah, the voices of ego busters in your psyche. And I'm picking up a parent or some form of elder that you really admired, or at least you should have been able to admire and look up to and be led by them. But instead, they spent most of their time just never being satisfied with you. And for a lot of you, this seems to have been internalized in a way of you kind of having that same energy with yourself. It's like, because you've gotten wrapped up in what seems like people pleasing in a way, constantly trying to prove to other people that you're good, that you're the best, that you're excellent, that you're capable of greatness and success, constantly feeling the need to prove that to people has gotten you into a cycle and then a muscle memory of being too much of a drill sergeant on yourself and or your own abusive boyfriend like always cutting yourself down type shit and then internalizing it in a way of what's the point because they'll never be satisfied and it's boiling down to the issue being you having a hard time being satisfied with yourself and this does tie directly into still the um, humiliating moments and memories from your childhood embarrassing shameful moments from your childhood whereas you develop seemingly a coping mechanism of uh, trying to get revenge by showing how successful you can be. Showing how much of an overachiever you can be. And there's a time and a place for that. But it seems as though a lot of you all have neglected to actually deal with the emotion of shame, humiliation, and embarrassment. Hey, isn't embarrassment a new emotion on the new inside out too? Yeah, so that might be also be a sign to go see inside out too. <laughs> But yeah, there's some facing and dealing with and processing feelings surrounding your memories. And I'm, I am also picking up some people who might like feel like they express themselves. But what I'm picking up here is a thing where those of you who are falling into that category, you may express what you think. You may express a lot of what you know, but you don't express so much your feelings surrounding these things. So you speak a whole lot of facts, perhaps, but you don't speak a lot of opinions. You don't speak a lot of feelings. And this needs to be balanced out. There's a time and a place to talk about your feelings. And so it's bringing up, <laughs> for one, it's bringing up us going on over to the last card in the layout, but definitely not least, this Eight of Cups. This Eight of Cups, which is literally of a skeletal lady, which could be, um, a corpse bride could even also be a princess because they could also be seen as a crown. Either way, this is a powerful feminine being that is crying, right? However, the tears aren't coming out their eyes. It's coming out of the cups around the crown that is on their head. And the Eight of Cups is all about letting things go, moving on to better. Okay, so let me get into some specificities with the messages that's coming up here to expound. Um, a major cleansing of your aura is having to happen because they're giving some answers concerning why you've had a hard time being placed in the best 
seat, the absolute best, what you feel like is the best, being first and not always second, being a bride and not always a bridesmaid, you know, that type shit. Being a, cap being a captain and not always a co-captain or whatever, what have you, you know? Being the boss and not just the lieutenant, being the queen and not just the princess, you know? Um, so yeah, what's coming up here is that what's been blocking that is all of this weight. It's a balancing of the root chakra and the heart chakra having to happen, essentially. Your financial career aspirations, your material aspirations and manifestations haven't been running over and overflowing at their highest potential because you have a lot of pent up negative emotions clouding the space, crowding the space. And this seems to be um, polluting your solar plexus chakra, which is the chakra for your confidence your sense of self-worth, your sense of empowerment. And those feelings that came up surrounding shame, humiliation, embarrassment, those are some specific emotions that spirit has brought up and memories attached to them. And even if you feel blurry about your specific memories, something you can do is take the clues from what I have said already, specifically with the emotions that came up, shame, embarrassment, humiliation, Meditate on those emotions and ask spirit to show you the memories surrounding them. And if and when they come up, depending on where you are in your spiritual process and healing and all of that, it may take you a couple of tries to get complete clarity on it. So, you know, be patient with yourself, indeed. And um, that's also what a, a part of the Eight of Cups represents as well, as well as the Eight of Pentacles that has showed up um, in the intro collective reading. Both cards have to do with patience. So, yes, be patient with yourself. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Take time in between if you need, you know, and cry if you need to. But try, try, a game. <laughs> but, yes, if and when you meditate on those emotions and experience to show you the memories surrounding them, as those memories come up, experience to then help you to process and purge what you no longer need, what is no longer serving you from those memories and make an intent on gratitude grace and wisdom right to hold on to those things okay so just a little little kickstarter right there little tip you know and we're gonna go deeper into the messages coming up from this card which is what i was saying spirit is giving some answers on what emotions are blocking your solar plexus space your confidence so feeling surrounding shame, humiliation, and embarrassment. There are some things to be unpacked there. I'm also hearing there are some people to relate to. Some people that need to hear your story and how you overcame or how you're still struggling through the recovery. They need to hear that because they need to know that they are not alone. It may also be uh, some people from afar that end up hearing your story and have uh, access to things that can help you through your journey as well. And you might be downplaying something about your healing process you may be down something downplaying something about your um resilience if you will and how good you're doing and how far you've come maybe downplaying something surrounding that and you telling your story and then other people relating to it and y'all relating to each other will give you this sense of enlightenment of damn nah i was really doing my thing like something because you might hear some people with stories that are similar to yours but worse in certain ways and you know things of that nature and it might like really occur to you like oh damn like okay it was bad, but I ain't have it that bad shit, you know? And that helping you gain some gratitude and also access another level of compassion, which will help you get out of uh, dwelling in your own shit. And suppressing is also a form of dwelling. It just shows up in a different way. <laughs> the struggle to let something go. Both are rooted in the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just because you're not talking a whole lot about whatever it is doesn't mean that you're not dwelling on it. And sometimes when you suppress so much, you end up attracting people that talk a whole lot. That talk a whole lot about themselves and that constantly dwell in expressing all of their hardships. And that can be spirit trying to kind of wake you up to your own shit. So that basically to burn you out of being so much of a safe space for other people. It's good to be a safe space, but there is a such thing as being too safe of a space to where people don't understand or know your boundaries or you have a whole bunch of people around you that don't respect or give a fin about no boundaries 
And this is because many of you are likely um, the type of spirit, the type of high vibrational energy radiates through you where people just mindlessly know. They just know off energy that they can talk to you and it's just something about you that makes them want to open up and like leave their sins on you. It's like you, <laughs> you are in the image of the mother goddess here. <laughs> the mother goddess in this oracle card where she cleanses people of their sins. And, you know, this is not to idolize us, of course, but it's just this spirit is also coming through to reflect to you specificities about your godliness, about your higher self. Having an ability to take darkness and dark energy and cleanse it and transmute it into greater and evolution. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that is why. People mindlessly find y'all so easy to open up to and talk to because it's something in their spirit that just knows I can release my burdens here and you can take it and you can filter it and cleanse it and transmute it into better. House and never. There are people who run the fuck out, which goes back to the boundaries that we were just talking about <laughs> and having to let people know one way or another that, look, you can vent to me, but you can't vent to me every day. Like, you can't be going into the throes of your depths and despair to me every day or even every other day. I will listen to you once a week. Once a week. And then those you've already had that conversation with and they just keep disrespecting your boundaries, you know it's time to cut them loose. And like I said, that's what the Eight of Cups card is about as well. Cutting them loose. You're going to have to grieve the circumstances. You're going to have to bite that bullet and cut them loose because those ties to those people could be blocking your progress. And, mmm... Before I wrap up, I'm going to go ahead and spit this message that is coming up here as I am being directed. Um, it's another answer to the question as to why always second best? Why always the bridesmaids, never a bride? Why always not exactly the best, but just adjacent and somewhere around in the group of people who are the best? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, it's another answer to that question for some people who um, have been cycling on that question and the insecurities that can come with it spirit saying there is someone or some people that you hang around with and these probably is some people or a person that you done been cool with since middle school or you've known them since middle school or maybe even elementary high school um picking up college for one or some okay and who i think it's a saying that goes like who you hang with precedes you i know um your reputation precedes you, but it's another. I know it's birds of a feather flock together, but then it's another one that basically is surrounding like the people you hang with. Even if you don't do what they do or agree with everything that they do, because they do what they do so loudly and it's really not good and you hang with them and people think higher of you, your affiliation with them, people end up blocking your blessings because it make people who are in positions to judge one way or another it make them not want to place you in first place it makes them feel like they don't want that type of they don't want even the risk of that type of representation so some people have been and you've probably been in competitions or something of the sort um, where there is a ranking system where you like, now how did a person win? And I know I did better than them. I know I am better than them at what we do. How the fuck they win? It's literally because their reputation is better than yours. And it seems like the main and possibly only thing that is tainting your reputation and your image is some of the people that you hang with. And some of this is coming from, ooh, some of this is coming from at least for one or some of you. Is somebody or some people that you think your friends and they always somebody like they root for you they trying to they gonna help you get this opportunity here this job there whatever what has you whatever what have you and then they always come back like oh I'm sorry friend but they wanted to do this and they wanted to do that and I really tried and da 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 or just one way or another it makes it back to you that the opportunity or whatever it was did not go through and friend act like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know why they do that. Da, da, da. Like she on your side. Like they tripping. They don't know what they missing. They don't know what they talking about. That friend is sabotaging you. That friend is the reason. <laughs> and 
you know, take this with the salt of grain, if you will. And as I say, if it apply, let it fly, okay? Because you might not even um, pick up nothing about this friend as of yet. Like, you blinded in some way. And for some of you, you might already see the signs and you just waiting for the confirmation, okay? But again, this don't apply to everybody. This is just some people in the group. Okay, it's a message that I'm picking up, picking up on, and it could even be one person at the whole reading. Okay, so if it don't apply, just let it fly. But if it apply, honey, it is some things to decide. All right, but as I was saying, their friend is the reason why the opportunities keep falling through. See, it's a situation here where it's like, again, they want to keep you around because they like how you benefit them. You make them look better in certain surroundings because they're attached to you. They're getting major accolades, promotions, opportunities, and all types of shit. Gifts and all types of different stuff. Like, they, they manifestations be coming in big time. But because they are attached to you, when it comes to the things that you're trying to do, they keep getting soiled. And for some of you, like I said, this person is directly the reason because they keep acting like they're saving you. They're trying so hard to help you stay on the right track. And that's how they're talking to like higher ups in a situation. And this is very specific, specific. This particular part here is very specific. And it um, seems like a situation of like trying to join an art organization. Like I said, trying to get a job, um, a promotion or something of the sort. But they have some sort of leadership position or just, you know, good reputation with the organization, the business, the company, all that. And they keep getting more opportunities in the area because they're acting like they're saving you. Like they're building you up. And the way that they talk about you and y'all's relationship to other people makes them look at them like, oh, you know, they try so hard. They're such a good Samaritan. They're such a great humanitarian. They're just such a wonderful person. If only they had better friends, you know. And they're trying so hard to pull their friends up, but they just can't get right, you know. <laughs> and it's got them looking at you like, mm, ah. Mm. And it's literally because that person who you think is a friend, who is acting like they're trying to help you elevate, who is acting like they're trying to just, you know, y'all build a table together, they shitting on you. And they playing you like a charity case. And that in hand is fucking up your, rep your reputation with other people and the surrounding things, which is why you keep not achieving exactly what you want to achieve. So you're going to have to cut that person off and likely, like, cut your attachment to certain areas and certain groups and organizations off and redirect yourself onto people who would truly appreciate you and also you know setting up their regimen of building up more appreciation with yourself and basically manifesting and officially opening up to the manifestation of your actual soul family who will genuinely and mutually exchange energy and opportunity with you and for others of you in that section it's somebody that doesn't have like leadership position anywhere that you're applying to or anything like that or any organization that you're trying to get in or anything it's a thing of people know who your friends are or they know who a friend of yours is and they know that y'all real close they know that you real cool you got it like you would be a perfect pick but they having a hard time trusting you because they done seen things about your friend that you ain't seen and it's like even if your friend is not talking shit about you is something that they are doing that is very unsavory and it's like everybody know or at least a whole lot of people know except you and it's because this person that you attach to they're either very manipulative in a way and or they just don't show you that side of themselves they don't talk about that particular sector of their life with you and other people don't want to approach you about it because they feel like, oh, y'all cool. Like, I can't predict how they would react to it because they might be right along with them. Ain't no telling, like, da da da, da. Okay? So, it's giving birds of a feather flock together. And there may be a reveal. If some of you haven't had it already, there may be a reveal to officially. And then, child, the tower card did come out also when I was doing the pool. Like, it just flipped out or whatever. But y'all, don't be surprised if you end up finding out something very um, alarming, unsavory, just out the way and maybe even unbelievable about a close friend or some close friends of yours. Don't be surprised because I'm picking up for, you know, some of you that's in this particular section that it's quite likely because it's time for you to 
cut those ties and move on to better things. And you're going to have to deal with the emotions around it. Of course, y'all love for that person or them people. It's not going to automatically shut off, but it's time to just go ahead and rip the band-aid off so that you can be on to the next, so that you can go ahead and do what's best for you and cut that dead weight test. Child, yeah. So what's up for the group in its entirety is this mother goddess of sex, earth, moon, and birth. She's coming up here to reflect to you major elements of your godliness, as well as giving some answers concerning lost information in your suppressed and repressed memories that's been blocking your progress and manifestations. And some of those things that came up were emotions and memories surrounding shame, humiliation, regret, and embarrassment. And all of those things crowding and clogging, dirtying up, polluting your your solar plexus chakra, which is all about confidence. All those things have been blocking your confidence, which has been waiting your aura. And some of that energy is literally people that have been around you and people that are still around you that you're attached to literally bringing down your vibration. And you having to cut those cords and cut those ties and elevate higher. Tis. But I hope all of that resonated and I hope all of it made sense, child. And with all that being said, if I do say so myself, I have milked this cow Jora. And I'm thoroughly appreciative for the exchange of vibes. And if you're feeling synchronized, please do me a divine design and like, share, and subscribe so that you'll be one of the first to be back through these queenly quarters for the next time. And be sure to bless my comment section with your questions and conversations. And as always, I bid you in always light, love, healing, and liberation. Emphasis on liberation. Mwah. Greetings, group two. What lost information is within your suppressed and repressed memories? That are causing you blocks and delays in your progress and manifestations. And without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into the specificities of the messages and these cards. So for y'all's first card from the Mother Merite Oracle, we have the celebration card and it is sideways. So you all may very well be doing some reflecting and or may have some triggering situations coming up lately or in the future consistently throughout your life perhaps surrounding celebrations um perhaps not taking the time out to celebrate yourself and celebrate things enough also uh concerning the memories surrounding celebrations it seems as though hmm potentially haven't been around a lot of potty poop party pooper energy um, this is also dealing with celebrations of life, as in funerals. So, some of you could be dealing with grieving lost loved ones. And it could be, um, people that, people or a person that you lost when you were a child or when you were very young. And... Uh, some of you that may not have lost a person when you were a child, but there are the specific people that are showing up that, um... Someone who passed away when you were a child that left a great impression upon you um, could be trying to contact you from the spiritual realm, uh, could be wanting you to give them some attention, think about them more, meditate with them more, um, allow them to be somewhat of a guardian angel for you. Uh, for others of you, one way or another, the loss like really hit hard. So I'm hearing and seeing that the lot of the lots of you goodness gracious <laughs> i'm hearing and saying that a lot of you kind of just like don't like to think about it try your best not to think about it and this could also be a coping mechanism habit that started when you were a child learning how to just compartmentalize things that feel really really heavy feeling like emotions get in the way of your progress and certain triggering things have been coming up surrounding you all lately, it seems, to kind of force you to sit and process your emotions, face your emotions, and actually, like I said, process them. And potentially use them for some form of creativity as well. And I am going to read from the text right quick, right fast. Celebration is in close contact with the memory card. 
<laughs> and it incites us to celebrate life and the deserved results we obtain, which belong to us as much as they belong to those who came before us, our ancestors, and the people with whom we collaborate, as expressed by the fraternity card. As the tree that renews its leaves but keeps its roots, we must always have the courage to renew our ideas while maintaining the principles that have guided us and that were passed on to us by our ancestors. The advice of the dead. Take action while constantly bearing the past in mind without being afraid of having to change your ideas even drastically. Now, what's coming up here a lot for this particular group is that spirit is really wanting and needing to emphasize to y'all the importance of your memories and indulging in them and learning the healthiest ways to indulge in them without getting lost in the sauce of your emotions and anxiety and fears and all of that. So heavily on the processing and in the intro collective reading video that I did, it was messages that came through about some people being at risk, messages coming through for some people who are at risk for developing dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, things of that nature that like affect the memory and for lack of better terms, the sanity of people, the older they get. And a large part of it is coming from one, I'm hearing that there's a pathology of people erasing information in your family. Um, meaning like, of course, if you are a descendant of slaves, things of that nature a lot of you know the hate crimes and stuff that went on back in the day that's like needless to say but what I'm referring to is people within your family oh child it's giving me scenes from Lovecraft Country how Montrose kept burning information that could have saved them a lot of trouble in at the beginning of everything and he kept burning and destroying information was literally burning and destroying history clues just hella information that could have been useful if he would have just communicated but instead he decided to dissolve it which he thought that he was being protective when in actuality he was setting history right up to repeat itself uh-huh so that's what's coming up here i'm hearing a uh, silent generation having family members from the silent generation i forget what decade span that is but you can look it up on google or i might put it in the comments if i think about it uh but just type in the silent generation year span or whatever but yeah that particular group and terminology is coming up because uh heavy influence seeming for a lot of y'all from people of your family who were heavily influenced and or come from the silent generation who felt like it was best to just destroy information, act like things don't happen, don't talk about anything that is negative or triggering or whatever, what have you, because if you talk about it, it might happen again type shit, like that's what they think. Or if they, um, like even the mindset of like, if you talk to kids about sex, they'll, that'll encourage them to have sex. It's also like par paralleling to that type of mindset as well. And see my vocal passages up here trying to crack that's not a coincidence so yeah it's a pathology in y'all's family of the throat chakra being compromised and there's also a lot of blue in this layout as well specifically in the celebration card um as well as another card that we're gonna talk about momentarily but to wrap up on what i was saying spirit is emphasizing to you all to make a drastic effort to indulge in some lion's mane, some ginkgo. Um, there was something else that came up. Make sure you watch the intro video to this, but also do your own research and find different herbs, mechanisms, things that are available to help uh, brain strength and brain health, as well as in the spiritual sense, like the, the scientific sense and in the spiritual sense as well. Um, Again, like it came up in the intro video, if you've been seeing signs and things like that, and or if this is your first time hearing about hypnosis, uh, different methods of doing and going about hypnosis, 
specifically for repressed and suppressed memories so that you can process and feel to purge your emotions and the trauma and all of that so you can transmute it into greater action that serves you and not is just repeating cycles of self-harm because repressing your emotions and repressing memories and stuff like that that is a form of self-harm because you are weakening your sense of discernment and if silencing people and silencing history silencing information silencing the truth has been a pathology in your family then like i said you're at extra risk because you've come from a village of people who were making a lifestyle of harming and corrupting and polluting the throat chakra and the third eye chakra which throat is all about truth communication uh, being able to hear yourself also knowing when to listen and what is valuable of listening to and then the third eye pretty much the same but what you see and how you sense things that are going on within you around you and unconsciously and subconsciously as well so yeah yeah do your research do your research but that's a major message that is coming through and it's also been repeated from the intro video and um if you have if you watch the intro video now you know that you are likely in that section of people who that message came through for about preventing dementia and alzheimer's and all that and with that said we're going to go ahead and segue into the card to the left of them which is the eight of wands again it's a action card so again redirecting and transmuting things for action so things either have been moving very fast in your life lately and or the pace is about to pick up you're about to be quite busy you about to have a lot of plans some for work and some for play play but regardless there are going to be quite a few things happening specifically as spirit triggering up emotions for the purpose of triggering up memories for the sake of getting information that is needed so i'm not gonna lie um it's some people in this group that may end up testifying in some court cases or a court case of some sort um and for some of you it could come from someone else bringing up something or you know bringing up charges on somebody or whatever and them telling their story and it drudging up memories and feelings and all of that for you and you're going to need those memories for information in order to help in the case hey if that ends up applying to you good luck good luck <laughs> and in general it's quite a few different energies coming up here but also rounding somebody saying something and then you having to like be a echoer of your own experience in some type of way in order to set the record straight and bring justice type shit so that's why spirit is heavily on y'all about remembering like y'all need to remember because it seems like this group in particular has a lot of resistance to their memories and to their emotions and i'm hearing that for some of you this has been making you sick i'm hearing uh headaches oh real real bad respiratory issues um someone needing a colon cleanse someone needing to like cleanse their digestive system uh wound cleanses needed yeah yeah so yeah things that had came up in the intro video a lot of it it seems a certain uh major messages that came up in the intro video is coming back through for y'all real strong on some shit as it concerns like build up so hmm hmm yeah <laughs> and a lot of y'all are probably going to feel frustrated going through this particular phase in your life but it's going to be happening as it is happening you know kind of fast but there will also be some moments like i said it'll be some moments for playing it'll be some moments that you'll be able to just sit back and retrospect and introspect about everything that is everything and it's happening like this as spirit kind of training you to establish balance and training you by taking you through your own like crash course cycling lesson on processing your experiences because i'm hearing for at least a lot of you nothing will be as bad as it seems 
and that that will more than likely occur to you because it's gonna be some moments where you feel like oh my god oh my god oh my god i can't but in actuality once you like start feeling those feelings i'm hearing that something was snapping your brain to be like wait i am not about to lose my motherfucking mind over this shit okay so uh let's let's breathe let's do them breathing exercises that people be talking about let's count to 10 or some shit like <laughs> Okay, so one way or another, you're going to be forced into some positions that will force you to kick your anxiety's ass and or your paranoia's ass and or your depression, dwelling on negative emotions, all that shit to kick its ass. <laughs> and it'll essentially be you proving to yourself and the divine realm proving to you that you don't have to get lost in the sauce of your emotions in order to feel and process them. You can take the power back over your emotions and your mind and the situation and not allow it to keep you down or keep you set back or keep you crippled. You can take back authority over your mentality and your situation and your memories can help you do that because there are likely times that you've done it before mindlessly. So definitely allow memories to be drudged up in this time and ask your divine realm for guidance for the sense of inner peace and for empress and or emperor energy to surround you and encompass you okay and definitely meditate when you can if you will on your memories and see what that you know what i'm saying brings you type shit <laughs> And next, we are going to call to the rights of them, which is the nine of wands. And right off the bat, I'm getting memories associated with feeling like your stuff is always getting destroyed. So for some, it could be a childhood memory specifically um, of chaotic people that you were living with. And when they get mad, they break each other's stuff type shit and or having gone through a home fire when you were younger and or um, natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, storms, things of that nature, having uh, done extensive damage to your home and probably even more stuff. And for others, it seems as though you may feel like you have this pattern or you have had this pattern of building things up and accomplishing goals and then you let somebody in to celebrate with you <laughs> celebration you let somebody in to celebrate with you or enjoy it with you and they do things that damage it and or break and destroy it and potentially cause you to have to start all the way back over again and you build it up and then somebody else comes over and breaks it down um i just got a vision of someone on a beach and it's like they build this sand castle a real good sand castle and then somebody just come over and kick it or pour water on it. It just does something obnoxious and disrespectful to destroy it before you can even have a chance to get a good look at it. And leaving you with the feelings that would be associated with it, such as anger, sadness, what the fuckness, like, oh my God, like, are you fucking serious? And for those of you that that resonates with, there could be some feelings having come up recently or that will come up surrounding, like, some fears that could be within you about rebuilding yourself back up because something in your subconscious, something in your mind is just like, what's the point of me constantly building this shit up if I clearly don't have what it takes to take care of it and maintain it or somebody is always going to come along to destroy it or take it from me. And along with the fact that this is a number nine card, Spirit is saying that that cycle is coming to an end. Most importantly, if you allow yourself to choose your higher self, choose Empress Emperor energy, choose to face your fears and call on God if and when you need to, call on your higher self if and when you need to, allow yourself to go through these next little couple tests and you will have healed the karma surrounding that particular element of having this constant repetitive cycle of every time you get some shit built up or every time you get something nice or every time you get what you want somebody destroys it or you lose it or you know one way or another 
And that's why Spirit is going to be taking y'all through that Eight of Wands energy and those Eight of Wands experiences, the kind of one thing to the next, busybody things happening, triggers coming, having to force yourself to process and deal with things in a balanced manner and handle yourself in a balanced manner to make it a priority <laughs> to not lose your fucking mind. <laughs> but yes, that's why all of that is going on and will be going on, not to mention the number eight, which is a number of infinity. It is also a number of karma so definitely allow yourself to take these messages that resonate and run with them just as it said in the book i ain't gonna say it verbatim but the advice of the dead was allow yourself to move and deal with your memories without being crippled by what if what if what if what if what if what if go with the flow be in the moment be present and go out of your way to face your memories and face your fears and whatever other negative emotions are surrounding them because some of you are dealing with energy like having a hard time feeling energetic um i'm hearing lethargic feeling uh fatigue a lot of the time again headaches i keep hearing a lot of that your health and your energy is being weighed down by all of those repressed and suppressed memories and emotions Spirit is saying that you're surrounded by people now and or you at least have access to people and different things now that you didn't before that will help you to heal these bodily things like such as the prevention of dementia and Alzheimer's and all of that as well as the purging of the colon and digestive system all that good stuff all the health and healing holistically and scientifically if it's needed boom bop shabow getting your health in order your spiritual health, your emotional health, and your mental health, and all that. Spirit is saying you have access to what you need. That's why they're wanting you to be present because they want you to discern who is who and what is what. And be faithful. Be full of faith. No matter what happens, release your grasp on the outcomes. All right? And also allow yourself to be mindful and knowledgeable about what different words mean to you and what they actually mean and whether or not the two correlate. So all that said, I ain't gonna lie. Um, <laughs> Spirit is being quite puzzly with you all. <laughs> Giving y'all scavenger hunts and math problems and homework. <laughs> But for real though, all of those things help with brain strength and brain health, specifically as it concerns memories and the brain's part and the mental's part in helping you process emotions and situations that you've been through, going through, and will go through. So that's definitely something that could be coming up to like doing more puzzles, putting more apps on your phone that allow you to exercise your brain. You could even do some crossword puzzles, play uh, the different word games and such. I was also hearing Legos, Legos, Legos. <laughs> Some of y'all might want to get into Legos. And that's something that will allow your brain to function in a happy place and have some fun and be creative all the while exercising itself. And then finally, last but not least, we have the Queen of Cups. And with this one, I'm hearing a lot of you already know. You already know. And this is also why Spirit is being very jigsaw puzzly with the messages here. Because y'all's major issue, group two, is surrounding resistance to knowing. Resistance to remembering. <laughs> and it's because there's an association that y'all are in the habit of doing. A lot of you at least. Y'all are in the habit of associating knowing the truth saying the truth and doing what you know that you should be doing as putting a target on yourself having someone or some people wanting to attack you or destroy something that you built so literally in fear of who you are and the gifts that god gave you because i am picking up a lot of psychic energy one way or another having really strong really unique spiritual gifts and a lot of you in creative things artistic things and y'all are literally 
blocking a lot of your destiny and what you really want and need because you're literally blocking like yourself from being who you are and remembering who you are because you've prioritized avoiding conflict over actually being great and enjoying life and creating a life that you can and will enjoy and with that you suppress your power i'm hearing afraid to let people know what you know and literally like i said out of fear of it putting a target on you or someone will try to take it or whatever and like i say it's like literally taking the power away from yourself and i'm hearing that y'all's clear audience seems to be trying to come through and if you're already aware of your clear audience it's trying to enhance and evolve and <laughs> you know I, I got some some song references have come up but i haven't spoken on them i may just add a video to this to this saga for to do some musical messages surrounding the memories and all that of it all <laughs> but yeah it's not a coincidence that a lot of songs and movies and shows and stuff have come up throughout this reading whether i vocalized about them or not because those are some elements that can help you become more aware of your clear audience and also channeling your clear audience a lot of people who are clear audience get messages through art so music tv shows movies plays books commercials spontaneously playing in the background uh and also on some casual shit people having casual conversation as you so happen to overhear <laughs> things like that as well so a way that you can exercise this is one watching a movie specifically one that may give you nostalgia or make you sad or horror movies or um movies that are really heartfelt, rom-coms, things of that nature. Whatever tickles your fancy the most and really gets you to feeling things that you can clearly feel. Watch it, indulge in it, and this is the same for it, music as well. Listen to it, indulge in it, and then journal about it. And it can be extra enhanced if you actually write down your journals, like with pen and paper, or pencil and paper, or lead. Also, you can go to whatever you listen to music on, uh, whether it's YouTube music, if you use YouTube music, make sure that you make yourself a YouTube account so that it'll be even more personalized <laughs> and go to like the super mix or, you know, just whatever the uh, variety mix is on the app and ask for spirit to tell you what you need to hear most or, you know, whatever intent that you want to use when you go into it and hit shuffle, hit shuffle. And the third song that it shuffles to will be the one that you should indulge in most. Even if you're not sure as of yet why it chose that particular song. You know, because sometimes it could be a song that you ain't never heard before. It could be a song that you ain't even like, like talking about. But allow yourself to indulge in it, journal about it, da da da. And let the thoughts and emotions and memories flow. Okay? okay and like i said um i also do musical messages it's been a while since i've done one um but definitely finna kick it back up and there will definitely be a video added to the saga for musical messages surrounding this whole topic with the memories and the information and all that furthermore i just want to point out the coloration of the queen of cups card from the mother merthe tarot deck okay she has on blue we don't talk about that throat chakra okay and music and art is also a part of the throat chakra those specifically that involve using your voice and using words <laughs> mm -hmm. um which gears towards a lot of y'all possibly having a divine purpose of being writers one way or another now we also have her wearing a purple sombrero a purple hat if you will that purple is definitely representing the crown chakra as the queen of cups encompasses the water sign energy as well so scorpio cancer and pisces and those signs tend to more effortlessly be tapped into their 
crown chakra energy and their third eye chakra energy and their throat chakra energy but you don't have to be a water sign for that to be but it's like water signs often have no choice but to be in their feelings so it's an extra cross to bear on water signs to learn how to balance the process of indulging in their feelings and then i'm also picking up earth sign energy here which would be like on the contrary to the water sign issue our signs is earthy rocky soily you know the soil needs water you know the earth pieces rock pieces they also need and or have to work with water one way or another like a beach <laughs> so because our signs tend to struggle with their emotions as well they often like to stuff them down and not not acknowledge them damn near demonize their emotions to hell <laughs> because they feel like it's just everything wrong with everything <laughs> and so the lot of you may either be water signs earth signs and or you could be surrounded by water signs or earth signs and or have strong placements of them in your chart and or just be functioning in that type of energy one way or another where you're either too indulgent in your emotions negative emotions specifically or you suppress them all together and try to avoid them like the plague but i'm hearing your heart space is your superpower so <laughs> group two y'all are literally at least a lot of y'all are the types of people <laughs> where your heart space is your superpower so as much as your heart space has taken a lot of hits because it is your superpower you also have to make a drastic effort to heal that space and continuously evolve that space in order to survive and thrive throughout your life and get everything that you deserve need and desire and a high vibrational sense especially being the fact that it seems like for a lot of y'all group too if your heart space is out of whack it starts to lead to illnesses and money loss one way or another. And the more you avoid your heart space and or misuse or neglect your heart space, the more you act as a parasite to yourself and or attract parasitic people. So a lot of y'all's loss of information is concerning y'all's voice, your sense of identity, and your sense of what you have to offer. And spirit is letting y'all know that the elements of your heart space, your truth in your throat chakra, the truth that you see and hear in your third eye chakra, and your relationship with the divine realm, your relationship with God and your higher self. Other lost information is concerning your sense of power and as well as your sense of creativity, enjoyment, pleasure, and overall celebration. And that information being lost is causing you blockages and delays due to the fact that there are fears surrounding success, fears surrounding knowing and speaking the truth and being and feeling and functioning in empowerment. And putting a lot of you in position to suppress certain very unique attributes and gifts and talents that you've been given out of fear of success and being great and being royal, royal. <laughs> and for some of you, there is Earth Star Chakra work that needs to be done concerning clearing up and healing generational pathologies of silence and truth and dissolving information that conceives wisdom. And if it resonated with you, definitely be sure to do your research on the different herbs and mushrooms that are good for brain health, the puzzles, puzzle games, Legos, all that, hypnosis, all that. Do your research and definitely take your time and ask questions and be discerning in your process. But all in all, allow yourself to trust the process and do what is best for you and be sure to prevent the illnesses and the Alzheimer's and dementia as much as you possibly can. And for some to avoid and prevent burnout as well. That's the Eight of Wands energy there once again. 
and a lot of you are likely clear audience and are going through things and needing to also do some research on things and some exercises on things concerning gaining more awareness surrounding clear audience and more evolution surrounding that gift as well a harmonizing of your heart frequency and your money frequency is coming together if you let it okay okay <laughs> And with all that being said, child, if I do say so myself, honey, I have milked this cow dry. And I'm thoroughly appreciative for the exchange of vibes. And if you're feeling synchronized, please do me a divine design and like, share, and subscribe. So that you could be one of the first to be back through these queenly quarters for the next time. And be sure to bless my comment section with your questions and conversations. And as always, I bid you in all ways like love, healing, and liberation. Emphasis on liberation. Mwah.